were divided on the admittedly subjective point of the redesigned 2017 Smart Ford Mo Cabriolet's looks. An additional 3.9 inches of width means great things for handling and drivability, but the high, stubby hood and the new headlights leave some viewers cold. And it's now 1.4 inches wider than a Fiat 500C. Isn't the novelty supposed to be the car's diminutive size? But before we go comparing the smart Ford Mo with cars that are borderline real size, it's probably prudent to mention that this new generation Ford Mo is better than its predecessor to the same degree that microwaving a pizza beats foraging for nuts and berries. From 3 to 3. We previously drove the new Cabrio in Europe, but this was our first crack at the US version on US roads. The smarts naturally aspirated, Mitsubishi sourced 70 horsepower 3 cylinder is gone, replaced by an 89 horsepower turbocharged engine with the same cylinder count. As was the case in its predecessor, the new model's idle is rough enough to have us wishing for auto stop, start. Maybe that's to be expected from a 3 cylinder engine, particularly when it's mounted behind your butt and under the trunk. There's a bit of lag getting into this engine's power band, but once it's over 3000 revolutions per minute or so, you can feel the turbocharger helping things along. The new Smart is much faster than the previous car, too, upgrading from excruciatingly slow to not fast. The model with the dual clutch automatic gets to 60 miles per hour in an estimated 10.6 seconds, while the newly available manual should take 10.4. Contrary to what the tiny engine might suggest, the Ford Mo manages just 33 miles per gallon in the city, 31 with the manual, and 38 miles per gallon on the highway. The bigger story might be the aforementioned dual clutch automatic, a $990 option, which is decades ahead of the single clutch automated manual transmission in the previous car. The new gearbox is only slightly less refined than others of its silk as opposed to being completely primitive. While much improved, it's still a little rough around the edges. Shifts often take frustratingly long to happen, and we were driving the car in New York City, where things need to happen now. Even in sport mode, the car needs a few beats to have a last sip of coffee and put down the bagel before responding to a mashed gas pedal. In traffic, despite the car's diminutive dimensions, the dual-clutch Ford Mo is just not the vehicle you want to point and squirt through city congestion, which is a shame given its city-friendly packaging and tidy size. A 5-speed manual transmission is now available, but there were no examples of such cars at our drive event. You will love U-turns. The steering feel is adequate, and the 22.8-foot turning circle is every bit as hilariously awesome as Smart would like you to believe it is. We found ourselves doing U-turns just for the heck of it, the car turns so tightly that you'll swear the rear wheels are steering, too. To drop a disclaimer, it's really hard to accurately gauge the effectiveness of a car's damping based on a drive in Brooklyn, whether on city streets or the bump-blasted Bell Parkway, a Mercedes S-Class could feel roof here. So take it with a grain of salt when we say we felt as though our sport package-equipped cabio crashed over the borough's many bumps, potholes, and cobblestone streets. What it definitely still does is pogo up and down on the freeway. Blame the ultra showrick wheelbase and the rear axle that carries more than half the car's weight. Inside, material quality feels more upscale all around, but the real difference is in the layout. The extra width has allowed designers to create a cabin that makes you feel like you're in an actual car. Well, the front half of one, anyway. It's a lot more substantial feeling than before, but there are still some odd ergonomics. You reach awkwardly to get to some of the controls you'll use regularly, such as the window switches or the mirror adjustment. Also, the steering column doesn't telescope, so beware if you have a Tyrannosaurus Rex-like arm-to-body ratio, like your author. Smart Sway to Cabriolet The top is slick and easy to operate. Push and hold the button once to open it partway, target style, then push again to drop the remaining rear portion. But then things get quirkier, for the full topless experience, you have to manually unlatch the remaining fulgur nut bars above the doors, which is a simple double unpicking affair done by touch. Next you carry them to the trunk, 
where they must be stowed in the proper order in the tailgate, and then bungee cord down the assembly before closing the trunk and heading off. We figure most drivers won't bother removing the bars 90% of the time when they desire the top-down mode. The in-car technology roster is headlined by Smart's Cross Connect app, which uses your cell phone as the infotainment screen and connects via Bluetooth. Some cool future functionality is promised, such as the ability to identify smart-sized parking spots via crowd sourcing. But the navigation makes Apple Maps look good, and it's handily outpaced by both Waze and Google Maps. The good news is that you can use other apps while your phone is mounted, making for an always up-to-date, if small, touchscreen. Gripes aside, we applaud this implementation, especially in lieu of a built-in system that is likely to be superseded by offerings in the mobile technology world by the time you make your first payment. Regardless of the navigation method, any mounted cell phone is bound to block some of the dashboard buttons, there has to be a better way to integrate this. And on the topic of design, the $120 tachometer protrudes randomly from the upper left of the dashboard like a snork snorkel. The little proboscis also houses the clock, and it's hard to train yourself to look there to monitor either of them. Because why would you? Start with the passion. Whereas the coupe starts as a bass pure trim, the cabriolet comes standard in passion regalia for $19,650, which means it gets powered and heated side mirrors, a height adjustable driver's seat, 15-inch wheels, and a bevy of color options. Smart parent company Mercedes-Benz contributes its useful crosswind assist feature, which is standard on all Fort Boys. It uses individual brakes to combat lane wander attributable to high winds. We didn't have a chance to try it on the Smart Cabriolet, but the previous car certainly had the tendency to get blown around at speed, thanks to its short wheelbase and lightweight. The next level up is the Prime, where another $1,000 gets you leather, heated seats, a lighting package, fog lights, and 15-inch wheels. Either trim can be had with the Sport package, $600, that includes a firmer suspension. 16-inch wheels, and paddle shifters. Oddly, you can't get the sport package with the manual transmission. Going up another $1,000 to the proxy trim level brings a JBL sound system, a blue and white faux leather interior, shift paddles, allowed suspension, metal pedal covers, and 16-inch wheels. Proxy includes the sport package minus the sport wheels, which can be spec for an additional $100. All three variants can add a bus package for $1,900. Our prime level car sticked for $23,300 with the sport package, the dual clutch transmission, and a few other goodies. Smart is quick to point out that its Port Mo Cabriolet is the cheapest convertible you can buy. But it should be, it's half a car, albeit a slightly better half a car than it was before.